Welcome to the World of Horror Podcast, Season 2, Episode 9. I'm Mom. And I'm Mac. And this is the podcast where we share our love of international horror. Fear is universal, but we're not afraid of subtitles. A disclaimer, the thoughts and opinions expressed are ours only. We have no credentials of any kind. We just enjoy discussing international horror movies. Also, these discussions will include spoilers. You have been warned. This week, we watched the 2001 Japanese tech horror classic Pulse, aka Cairo, and the 2006 American remake. Let's move on to our first segment, Mom and Mac Chat. Hi, Mac. How's it going? It's going pretty good, Mom. Um, I'm kind of sleepy and I am realizing that a week off of work might not have been enough time off of work (laughs) because it's crazy how fast it's going by. And I'm like, I'm not ready yet. I can't, I can't do it. I can't go back. I don't feel like my vacation has occurred. Like it doesn't feel like it started yet. (laughs) And I'm like, Oh no, it's Wednesday. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> do you have plans for the weekend no but i i usually like that but now maybe i should plan something like because well i made a to-do list of all the things i wanted to like be productive about because i was considering this like oh i kept calling it the week to get my life together um and i'm crossing out some stuff but then some stuff i get to and i'm just like i can't do that i just can't do it right now <laughs> <laughs> like arrange an appointment to get the inside of my car cleaned. I just can't do that right now. <laughs> oh yeah, but you'll feel so I good. know. I know. Like I know if I do it, me next week is going to be like, "Wow, Mac, thank you. That was really smart of you." And then if I don't, I'm going to be like, "Nasty car still." So, I just don't want to do it. <laughs> I get it. I have to make an appointment for the cats on um, because they weren't seen at all last year. Mm-hmm. And it was Wolfie's birthday Aww. yesterday. Happy birthday, Wolfie. She's two. Aww. And um, Rosie is four. So, and they're pretty spry and healthy and everything, but I'm sure they need rabies shots and then whatever else they need. Um, but, you know, I had them at one clinic and mm. the proprietor was like uh, disbarred or whatever happens to you when you lose your (laughs) credentials as a vet. So I'm like, ah, (laughs) and I don't like the other place, you know, where I spent a fortune on Sammy's cat. So, um, but I mean, I have a place I can take them to. I just, you know, it's not going to be fun. Just have to make an appointment and I know it's going to be a lot of money and or maybe not. I don't know. I don't think it's usually... Sometimes they do bring me the bill and I'm like, holy shit. Like, what are you doing? Like, 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 like one time the bill was like $500 and like nothing I felt like even happened. And like, I paid it, but I was like, like she looks like, what did you do to her? <laughs> like, what did you do that took $500? That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's going to be anything like that, but Mm. with two cats, you know, that's true too. It's double, but today I cooked. (gasps) Yay. Yeah. So I went out and I got, I had to get edamame and what else I have to get? Garlic. Anyhow. So got all my little ingredients together. I had a lot of them already, but what I made was a peanuts peanut spaghetti dish Ooh! and I've been trying to get away from meat not like really intentionally it's just like I haven't really wanted to eat meat and then I've just been looking up recipes and I saw that one I was like and I like spaghetti but eating it with butter is not too healthy so (laughs) next best thing peanut butter peanut butter and well yeah so it's peanut butter and soy sauce and rice vinegar Ooh. That sounds really good. Sesame oil. Um, yeah, it was super good. And I have a 
you know, one of those bullet blenders. Mm -hmm. So it's super fast to like mix stuff up. Can you send me that recipe? I felt like a goddamn adult. I was like, what? You are, yeah. And then um, because I was at Aldi getting some of the ingredients and it's been my habit to pick up a pizza at Aldi because they're fresh and they're cheap. Mm -hmm. And I like pizza. And, and I literally like did a step to get it. <laughs> the muscle memory. <laughs> <laughs> and then this little voice in my head said, remember your plan. <laughs> and I was like, oh. <laughs> the plan, Christina, the, the plan. The plan. <laughs> oh. So I was like, I have to tell somebody because I feel so proud of myself. I am so proud of you because that I know that urge. It, it's like the devil himself is holding your arm and you're like, hmm. It's the devil. I can't. What can I do? <laughs> but when you're like, no, you just feel like, man, I'm a fucking badass. Yeah. And that's what you are. I know. I feel that way. So that was very exciting. Um, oh. You just reminded me of something that I, com- I guess, man, when something I don't like happens, I just completely am like, let's just flush that from the memory. But you reminded me of something from earlier today periodically at my apartment they have to turn off the water and i don't know how this happened but like only they only email alan with updates even though i'm the one that made our accounts so i have to rely on alan to tell me when there's like announcements and he's always very good but he just forgot to tell me today that they were turning the water off and so first i like flush the toilet in the morning and it makes like an insane noise and i was like okay so i but i didn't i was like (laughs) I'm just going to leave it for a second. And then I went to go um, brush my teeth and I turn on the water and it's just like, you know, just like, like brown water. It's like dirt, you know, but it's, it's, it was scary. And I screamed and I was like, ah, and I was like, okay, great. Like, awesome. Cause then just my sink was nasty. And then it happened like two more times that like, I would be in the restroom and then I would go to wash my hands and I, I would turn, I just couldn't stop. Like I would just turn the faucet mm. on and, it'd be, and I immediately would be like, Oh fuck. And like would turn it off. And every time I'd be like, stupid, stupid, stupid. Um, yeah. <laughs> Luckily they turned it back on soon, but there were two times there where I was like, God damn it. How did you forget it again? <laughs> That's like when, um, my power went out, um, recently I'm super lucky because it's gone out. I've lived here like what, six years and it's gone out maybe, I don't know, five times or something, but never for a whole day. Even when like people all around me are like out for several days because Mm. of like an ice storm or something. You're chosen. I I know, but I don't, so the power went out and then, um, I don't know. I was like, well, I'll just go on the computer and then do some work. I'm like, what? <laughs> but <laughs> I've definitely done that too. <laughs> so. Where I've been like, okay, yeah, like, um, let me, and then I'm like, Wi Fi, you dumb idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so, you um, stupid fuck. <laughs> have you been watching any? good shows lately i started watching shrill um because of you and maddie and um yeah it's really great except it really does freak me out because like i never i've seen ad bryant so much in my life actually and i never once thought she looked like maddie but on this show i don't know what it is i think it's both her hair the makeup and the outfit she wears, it's just like, I only see Maddie. And it's not like weird, but it just more, I'm just like, it just feels like I'm watching the Maddie show, which is exciting. Like, it makes me like it more. <laughs> and then I'll just message her and I'll be like, did you like this part? Because again, I think she looks like you. And Maddie agrees with me. Um, oh, good. She's the one that told me, she was like, she should play me in my biopic. <laughs> um, let's see, what else have I been watching? Um... I watched a lot of shitty movies recently. I'm sorry. You know, it. I know they're going to be shitty before I turn on the, before I press play. <laughs> I'm like, two out of five on Amazon? <laughs> like, <laughs> and then I get to the end and I'm like, two out of five. <laughs> I, um, 
I think it's on Netflix. I saw Ragnarok, which Ooh. is a Norwegian show. Mm-hmm. And I've watched, like I told you, I've watched so much Norwegian stuff that um, the guy who plays, his name's Loritz, but he's Loki. He was in this movie. It was actually produced in English called 22 mm. July about the mass shooting at the kids camp. Do you know mm-hmm. that story? No. Oh, gosh. Well, there's not a lot of mass shootings in Norway, but there was a terrible one a few years. Well, I don't know how. I don't know the year. And this guy um, shot up a bunch of kids at a summer camp. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, it's a really fascinating story how they handled it versus how we handle That would be interesting to – yeah, because, yeah, like you said, like – can't think of many other um places where this is a um like specifically like i know there's like like terror attacks in other in other countries but it's like specifically like a shooter type thing of just like a random act of like like despicable violence you know just it does kind of feel like a uniquely american thing well the shooter (laughs) the shooter um didn't kill himself and so and they don't have a life imprisonment oh, sentence in interesting. Norway. Yeah, interesting yeah it is that's really interesting so one of the actors plays this kid who survived mm. and that guy plays loki in the okay ragnarok and he as the show goes on the character of this character starts like wearing more makeup and like oh. wearing like you know, typically women's yeah blouses and things like that. Gets very that, feminine. And he starts understanding that he is Loki. And he is asking his professor at school, he's like, what do you make of that story where Loki gives birth to this snake, some snake? Yeah. And um, the professor's like, yeah, yeah, that's part of the story. And um, he's like, would you say he's the first trans character in history? And he's like, wow, yeah, maybe so. And I thought, wow, that was a pretty interesting take. That is really cool. Like I've, I've seen actually a lot of people, um, well, <laughs> um, I was on Tumblr for a while and a lot of people there love the Avengers. So I saw a lot of, saw a lot of Loki things on there. Um, and so then I knew, I knew about like the story being kind of like having a lot of different gender presentations for Loki. So yeah, that that's cool that they explicitly were like, like naming Loki as like a trans character. That's neat. Yeah, I've never heard that before. So then I just like, I, I zoomed through that show. And then I just put into like a search engine, like shows like Ragnarok. And there are all these like fantasy shows. Like there was this one, this teenager turns 18 and finds out she's half angel. Uh. You know, it's like- <laughs> So I tried the angel show. I could not, I could not do it. But one funny thing about that was they call human beings mundanes. Oh, I'm like pretty good. That's, That's pretty, pretty good. good. So, but I found this show on HBO called The Be Foreigners. Okay. Also Norwegian. And here's the premise. So a bunch of people start appearing in the water. And they're only from three time periods, the Stone Age, the Viking Age, although they say we don't like to use the Viking, the V word. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, like the like 1900s. Mm-hmm. So just from those three time periods. And then, you know, we, we <laughs> it's so cool. It's just like we jump forward and we see how they're like assimilating into the culture or not like Mm. a lot of the stone age people prefer to be homeless because Mm -hmm. they're used to being outside and you know being connected to nature Mm -hmm. and then there's a buddy cop thing where one of the viking quote-unquote viking uh people becomes partners with this like you know present time guy Mm -hmm. really fascinating so i love it it's really great that sounds and, super um, cool. Like halfway through. It's on HBO. It's in Norwegian. But there was another. I was like, I know that girl. Who's that girl? <laughs> she was on Ragnarok. So ah. it's like. Yeah. So 
I just feel like a nerdy uh, <laughs> Norwegian TV person. I mean, it's cool because I've legit never met anyone else who's ever talked about it. But <laughs> you make it sound really cool. And like, I genuinely want to check all those shows out. So yeah. Oh, I was going to say, have you seen the movie Troll Hunter? No, but I have to watch it. You have to. I saw that um, like last week and um, I ended up really liking it only because the, and I think, and I specifically thought of you because like the start of the movie is just kind of like boring to me because it's like just falls a bunch of kids. But then they they meet this guy who's like the troll hunter and he's the best character in the whole movie. Like his name's Hans, I think. And he is just this older guy, but like I, you just will love him. So like I need you to watch it and tell me what you think about that character. Okay. I will watch it. What were you going to say? Oh, also that I'm listening to a book on tape. And it's uh, from a Swedish author. He he does he did the Valander series of like crime detective mm. um, novels, but the the guy who is reading it is really funny because he's just got a regular American accent, and then he <laughs> then he comes across like the names like Magnusson or you know <laughs> Sigmundson. Yeah, and uh, it's like, come on, dude, you don't have to like. We do know that and it sounds weird and it's not even correct i'm sure mm. you know it's just an americanization of you know the swedish name so you're not going to get the pronunciation dude so yeah it's very distracting but <laughs> but i've downloaded like five of those on audible so oh and we're on audible <gasps> so exciting yeah it feels fancy when are we going to get that bezos money I don't know. <laughs> might not happen. <laughs> Bezos. I hope you haven't, like, you know, counted on all that money coming in. You know you can't. You know you can't count on Bezos. <laughs> can't count on him. No. I'm listening to Blood Meridian on Audible right now. Oh wow! 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 I'm not a fan. You don't like Cormac McCarthy. I don't know why you keep listening. <laughs> because. I, people are like, I, I get intrigued in the same way I didn't like the witch and I was like, okay, but everybody likes it. So like, maybe mm -hmm. I need to give it a chance. I did not like the road, but everybody's like, Ooh, blood meridian shooting themselves over blood meridians. So I'm like, okay, let me read it. And I'm just like, um, cause then, uh, look up a picture of Cormac McCarthy and then think about him, uh, detailing, um, you know, the brutalization of, uh, you know, indigenous peoples. And it's like, this is not a good look. I don't know. Like, I know part of it is kind of, I mean, it must, the brutalization is the point to be like, mm. I hope it's bad. But like, just when you, um, I, I, it's kind of reductive to me. I, I don't really want to see this, this story told from the viewpoint of an old white guy personally. Have, have you ever read Sherman Alexie? I think, let me that name sounds really familiar. Well, he's written um, like YA fiction and then also fiction for oh, adults. Oh, yes. I I read that Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian book. Mm -hmm. I read that twice. Yeah. It's really good. Mm -hmm. He – I can't remember the name of a book, but he had a, like a, a war – a battle scene that made me legit nauseous. Like, I I don't think I've ever read a book that made me feel nauseous, but that one did because the, the imagery was really, really intense. But And I don't remember Blood Meridian, but I read it because my friend Ben was like this huge Cormac McCarthy fan. And I did like The Road, and I do like The Road, but I think those are the only two works maybe one more novel that i read by him but uh, not my favorite but i, I classic wanna, american author <laughs> I, to it like i'm totally prepared to accept that because i haven't finished it yet you know so like if it turns out that i'm interpreting it all wrong and that you know i need to read an essay to understand what he's going for i would accept that like i I'm by no means like an expert and I'm not done with the book yet. 
it's just it feels weird like and then to be like oh this is um one of the greatest american novels of you know the past century it's like oh boy because i feel like if um like i'm white reading this feeling massively uncomfortable it's like can only imagine the kind of like psychic damage you would take like reading it if you know it it felt like you were the person being brutalized you know in the novel so uh, and then it just feels weird like okay they're teaching that like that would really suck like I, i'm just trying you know i try to put myself in that position of like what if i was forced to read a book that you know was told from the viewpoint of somebody who's transphobic who like wants to kill all trans people it's like that wouldn't be fun for me um so yeah i'm just not my fave book right now <laughs> but i'm gonna finish it <laughs> I get it. I mean, I get it. It's like when you were saying, like, when everybody loves something and you're like, am I wrong? Yeah. It's like that promising young woman. I was like, what? Yes. Oh, my God. The fuck? It Why? won an award. I know. It's like super popular, super acclaimed. I'm like, what the fuck? That's how I felt watching The Joker, too. I was like, oh, God. What? What is this drivel? Like, really, I was like. <laughs> Apparently right now, Cruella is rated higher on Rotten Tomatoes for both critic and audience score, and I think that's justice. Why? Because people have been laughing about Cruella because um, instead of – they're giving her a tragic backstory. Oh, right, right, right. Like, instead like of just being – Yeah, her mom Dalmatian. was killed by Dalmatians. It's like, <laughs> you can just hate Dalmatians and want to skin them. Like, I know mm. – there are yeah. some old ladies I know that would like to skin a dog. Like, <laughs> that ain't that weird, honestly. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm not saying it's good, but like, those people exist and their moms weren't killed by packs of dogs. <laughs> I think that's really funny. It's like, you know, I don't know. It's just so cliche. Like, that's yeah. how you explain why a person, a villain, is a villain. Yeah. So, if, but if that's rated higher than Joker, good. I'm into the, I, Okay, I saw that movie with Mr. C in the theater, and he didn't like it either, thank God. What, what if he was like, that's the it's best movie, movie I've ever seen? <laughs> I'd be like, um... Okay. Yeah, I hated Joker. Like, hated it. And then, actually, we both know somebody who liked it. Somebody we're very close to. Who just had a birthday yesterday and who is very intimately connected to the pod friend of the show <laughs> yeah but she loves joaquin like she fucking okay. loves that guy this is what it is because i know people on my who i follow on twitter people that i know that fucking love joaquin and they like that movie and it's the joaquin event you you put anyone you put another man in that movie all those people would turn on it. Yeah. It's the Joaquin effect. I He's fine. Like, I don't have a problem with him, but... It, it, whatever he does ain't enough to salvage the poor writing and just absolute mm. bullshittery yeah. that was Joker. <laughs> yeah, it was really fucked up and fucked. But... Um... And I'll get, I'll get into a fight with anyone who wants to talk about this. Hop in my fucking DMs. I will I will fight. I will fight you. you I cannot accept that that's a good movie. I cannot. <laughs> don't hop in my DMs. I don't even know what that means. Don't hop in her DMs. Hop in mine. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Should we get into it? Let's get into it. I have been enjoying this Mom and Mac chat, though. I have, too. I could keep going. Also, happy birthday a couple days early. Hey, thank you. And happy birthday, Quinn. And happy birthday, Quinn. You guys both have like, um, what do you call that? Hallmark birthdays? No. What's a word? Landmark. No. <laughs> you know, you have a big birthday. What's it called? You mean like a birthday a lot of people have? Well, like, you know, 25 or 40, for example. Oh, oh um, Milestone? Milestone, yes. Milestone ah. birthday. We both have milestone birthdays this year. Oh. 
Okay, let's get into it. So Pulse, a.k.a. Cairo, was written and directed by Kiyoshi Kurosawa, and it stars Kumiko Aso, Haruhiko Kato, Koyuki, Kurume Arisaka, Masatoshi Matsuo, Shinji Takeda. That the uh, last name is Yoshizaki, who <laughs> I really like his character, but he's like barely in the thing. Okay. It's 119 minutes. So here's oh. the deal. <laughs> this movie, somebody called it a tone poem. Um, okay. I mean, it's, it, there is a story, but that's not really the important part about this movie. Mm -hmm. And it's told in, there are two storylines that eventually intersect. So we can talk about what happens in the movie, but I think really what makes this a special movie is like the cinematography and the tone and the music and just how everything kind of works together to create this mood. Mm -hmm. And what agree? a mood. I would Boy. agree. What a mood. Okay, so we've got two groups of people. So I'm going to call them the greenhouse people and... The university people. The dorm people. The dorm people? I feel like sure. he, we see him a lot in his dorm. Yeah. University. The students. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So at the plant shop or the greenhouse, um, there are a number of people. We've got Michi, Junko, Yabe, and Taguchi. Taguchi has been missing for a week. And so uh, Michi goes over there and... Um, Seems kind of like um, dazed, maybe. Mm -hmm. Definitely he's not... No energy. Right. And then what's significant about this interaction is seemingly out of nowhere, he hangs himself. And so Michi just, you know, turns a corner and sees him hanging there poor michi they, i know michi is obviously traumatized i really like the shot of her she i don't know if she grabs like she, she's just all coiled up mm -hmm. like when she sees his body like almost like you know um like a kid like mm -hmm. just like i just really like that and <laughs> yeah i i really like um i feel like the way that this happens too is so horrific and like like truly out of nowhere and weird that um i actually really really like this scene like a lot like i cuz i almost feel like just the fact that that could happen is the horror in itself like it looks scary too i mean they did a great job making that look you know really horrific but like just the idea of you're talking to somebody one minute and then if you like turn and then like that happened like that would be mind-blowing like it would be like yeah. what am i that that's almost like seeing a ghost like what like this was not in the list of possibilities of what could happen next um and yeah i just think it's a great like start to the movie of like because you i felt confused for a lot of it this was the second time I've seen it, and I almost watched it a, a third time uh, in preparation for the pod. But I think it definitely, I mean, unless you're like a genius at like following stuff and analyzing stuff, and you, whoa, host, you might be. I'm not. So I Me usually either. need to see something more than once, something like this more than once to, you know, feel like I'm really getting it. Mm hmm. You know, you might want to watch it more than once. But I think it's worth it. I really enjoyed it a lot more the second time. Mm -hmm. So Taguchi had been working on this computer disc. I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> but <laughs> this, this at least sounds more realistic than anything that they say in the American one. Like, at least in this, I'm kind of like, I don't really know what y'all are talking about. But like, you're saying it with such a professionalism that I'm kind of like, Okay, sure. <laughs> yeah, so this is 2001. So 
Uh, later, when we meet another character who is just learning how to get on the internet, it makes sense and, because yeah. it's like um, it, it's it's you sort of have to cast your mind back. I mean, it is a, a different time, mm-hmm. and um, so he's been working on this computer disk, and on it, the coworkers see that it contains an image of Taguchi staring at his own computer monitor. And there's like this like um like mirror effect. Mm-hmm. It's like it goes um, on forever. Yeah, that's a cool effect. And then there's another monitor and it has this sort of ghostly face mm-hmm. staring into the room. So another coworker, Yabe, receives a phone call of a distorted voice saying, Help me. Ooh, it's pretty This creepy. one's so scary. Yeah. So like ooh. <laughs> <laughs> also sound. like horrifying too to imagine of like a ghost calling you and like where <laughs> that ghost is coming from like like to yeah ooh, freaky yes he goes to Taguchi's apartment and he sees a black stain on the wall where Taguchi had hanged himself and I love he, this motif I do too I think it's really good yeah when when the people in when the people <laughs> okay, so <laughs> we've got our characters. We've got the mm-hmm. characters we're concentrated on. We've got other people in Tokyo. We've got people who appear on computers who are solo and they're lonely, we infer. And then mm-hmm. we have ghosts. So mm-hmm. that's the whole you know world that we have. But when somebody kills himself, they leave this black stain, like wherever they they did it. It's like an echo. Yeah. And I I love like all. I really need to watch this movie again because um, again I still feel like I don't even feel like I just don't like it. I just am like it's just not clicking for me. But I do really like everything about the. The mood, and I guess maybe that's kind of hard about watching it for me, is it's a two hour long movie, and the mood is intentionally very dreary and just very like, uh, like lethargic and stuff. But that's the whole point, but also that is what it is. So, um, but I just think this idea of a stain being like an echo specifically for this kind of like mood, it just feels so right. Like, it just, you know, like somebody's been there forever. And that's just where they'll always be. It just seems like, oh, just, I really like the world that they create. Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, I think it's kind of confusing and I don't, I'm not sure I really understand mm-hmm. um, how it works. I mean, I feel like I understand what the writer is saying, but I'm not really sure, like, logistically <laughs> how this stuff works, but We'll, we'll get there. But Yabe finds a paper um, in Taguchi's apartment, which says uh, a paper, and on it, it says the forbidden room. And he sees a door that's sealed with red tape. Now, if you saw a door, okay, so you you go over to your friend's house, your friend who just hanged himself. Yeah. And you find a piece of paper that says the forbidden room. And then you see this like room that's sealed up with red tape. What would you do, Mac? Is this the forbidden room? <laughs> um, you know, I want to say that I wouldn't go in. But if I did not know that I had ghosts, if I did not know that I was in a Japanese horror movie, I would mm. absolutely go in. Okay. But had I had the knowledge, like, I feel like it would just be too enticing. Like, why is it in red? Like forbidden what could it what, what could be forbidden about it you know like what is he stores porn in there like what is mm. it you know um but then if i if i looked down and saw the genre i'd be like oh fuck i'm out <laughs> <laughs> well wait a second mac what kind of what movie are we in now <laughs> <laughs> i don't think it's a japanese horror movie but no no, so then I, I would go in. Okay. So uh, so does Yabe. He goes in and he encounters a ghost. Oh, this is mm. ghost. Oh, best God. scene in the movie, I think. Best, I think this yeah. is the best scene. This yeah. is just an, an um, 
I, I love it too. And it's so cool. And now I'm not sure if this woman who is the ghost was a dancer. Um, I read somewhere that she was a ballerina or something, but she, oh, it's just so cool. Mm -hmm. So she's standing against the wall and she's, it's just like lit so cool. Cause you, it's very dark, but you see even a darker figure there. And then she starts to move, you know, out of the shadow, but she's walking in this extremely exaggeratedly slow manner. And it's so weird. It's and so... just, just that is like, what ah! the fuck? And yeah. then she does this sort of like, move where she sort of like dips down and then mm -hmm. um then she gets back up again and it's just awkward and not the way we move our bodies mm -hmm. and what i like about this movie too is i don't know what the budget was but they were so creative at creating creepy moments yeah and they didn't have to have special effects or anything no it's just like get a creepy dancer lady to like <laughs> do Done. this move and it's fine. You get it. It's scary as fuck. So he backs away and he sort of like falls behind this piece of furniture. And then she slowly creeps like over the piece of furniture and looks down on him and he freaks the fuck out. So good. Great scene. Yeah. Chef's kiss. So then Michi receives a call that you know helped me call and she checks on yabe and she sees a black stain on the wall similar to taguchi's one so she realizes um that junko has unsealed and entered a red taped door and this is kind of something i really didn't understand like and then obviously the american movie didn't understand it either um <laughs> <laughs> like I just kind of didn't get this idea of the first, like, I didn't understand why it was forbidden, you know? Uh, I didn't understand why red tape would do anything. That too. Yeah. Um, but in the reality of this movie, if you seal up a room with red tape, um, you can contain the ghost until, you know, somebody like voluntarily goes in there or else there's like a demolition because mm -hmm. at one point there's like a demolition of a room anyway but junko asks, acts really weird i don't know if she's just paralyzed by fear but this ghost comes up to her and she's just sort of like standing right there and um michi has the you know michi knows what's up and she's like we gotta go you know let's go and um finally is able to pull her away. But then of course, Junko becomes catatonic from this encounter. And again, this, this is kind of where I just kind of began being like, I don't know what's going on because like it, like, I don't know, call it what, what you will. But when there's like a mechanic in a movie and it involves like time passing and stuff to then that person dies, it's like, I need that to be uniform. Or else, like, I can't, like, I don't know what's going on. And so, like, it just kind of was weird to me how this, like, she felt so different from, like, the way she was behaving felt so different from the other two people that we've seen, you know, who were, like, afflicted. Um, and so I knew she was and that she was, you know, probably that she was going to die because she had seen this ghost. But I was just kind of like, how does it work? Like, I don't really know what, what even the the weight of what i'm seeing is because i don't really get what's happening yeah so would it see what so we don't know what's happening and i don't know <laughs> either <laughs> like is it that you encounter a ghost and the ghost like in the american version it's mm. like you encounter a ghost and the ghost like sucks out your soul but in the japanese version it's like you you catch like de debilitating depression. Yeah. But That's she's kind of weird too. Like she kind of seems a little bit frantic sometimes too. Yeah. Junko does. Um, I, I don't know. This, this, uh, it was kind of in this part of the movie that I was kind of like, <laughs> like, 
And we should say these, there are two storylines, but I'm just going through this first one altogether. In the movie, they switch back and forth between these two stories. So that's also a little bit confusing. It'll contribute. But once Junko is out of the picture, that's, she's the last person in this storyline. And then she goes to check on her mother because she calls her mother and she, she, you know, there's nobody there. And so, and she runs into Ryosuke. Kawashima, and he is the major player in the second story. So he's so cute. He's a really cute. He's guess a big how, cutie. Guess how old the actor is now? Uh, 40? 46. Four, oh, okay. So he was yeah. 26. Yeah, so I could date him. <laughs> you could date that cutie. <laughs> anyway, he's he plays an economic student. And he has just signed up to get the internet. And uh, he does not, he's not a computer guy. He doesn't mm-hmm. understand how it works. So <laughs> that's so crazy. So it's called Uranus. It's not like um, AOL.com, but it's like Uranus.com, or whatever. And he, you know, logs on or whatever. And then he starts seeing these disturbing images of people alone in dark rooms. Now, what I didn't understand was these are actually people. Yeah. I, I thought maybe they were dead. Oh. And they were like echoes of like their former self. But no, these are just people who are desperately lonely. And they're just all by themselves in these, you know, rooms. But then, like, what's up with the guy with the bag over his head? So he's just like hanging out. Saturday that, night, gonna yeah. put a bag on my head. It felt a little bit just to be creepy, but it yeah. kind of had, which sometimes I'm okay with, but it's like so a lot of this kind of re- relies on the reality of the world because it's yeah. like making a commentary on like an introduction of a technology. So I'm kind of like, again, I need something to make sense. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, it's. It's very confusing to the viewer. It's confusing to Ryosuke. He <laughs> goes to sleep and in the night, the internet just like turns on itself and he unplugs his, his computer and he goes to he goes to the computer science department and he runs into Harue Karasawa and he's like, um, can you help me understand like what's going on? Like I just got the internet and I, you know, the first thing I see are these, like all these people and yeah. she's like, just bookmark the page or just like print screen. And mm-hmm. um, so- I really like their interaction a lot. Like I really <laughs> like the, both of their characters. I loved that. She, I was just this idea of like somebody, cause she wasn't ever rude at all. She was just like, she's like, do you know what print screen is? Like, she was just like the most helpful person ever. And he's just so hopelessly like, doesn't know anything. Like I, I really enjoyed their dynamic a lot. Yeah, me too. Um, so when he's at home, he tries to do everything that she said, but the computer's not cooperating. Um, but then we get the video of the man with a head in his plastic bag in a room and on the wall behind him, it says, help me written all over the wall. Now here we get this one character, like he's got like one scene, maybe two. Um, what's his name? Uh, Yoshizaki. So this guy gives us the, a theory mm-hmm. that, okay, we have souls. And then when, I, when we die, our souls or our consciousness or whatever goes to this other realm. But there's only a finite amount of space in that realm. Okay, here's my problem. Yeah. <laughs> Why? So how is a soul physical? Yeah. Like is this a room and they're like they're crowded or if it's a consciousness or a soul or your mind or pick your word, I don't care, your spirit, that's you sort of by definition that's like not physical. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't get this thing where like they're you know they're running out of room over there in the other <laughs> on the other yeah. plane of existence where there is no physical being. Yeah. 
little what's weird. the unit of measurement? Like what's the what's the fluid <laughs> ounce of a soul? <laughs> right. But okay, so his theory is that they're running out of space and so these souls have to go somewhere so they're just you know, these are all the souls, you know, throughout all of human history. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but maybe you can help explain this to me. Like, I read something that said that in Japanese, maybe it's certain Japanese religions or it's just Japanese culture, that the idea that there are just, like, ghosts, like, all around us all the time. Have you ever heard of that? Um, I honestly don't know much about, like, Japanese mythology or like the supernatural world beyond like the idea of like kami, you know, like the idea of like there's kind of like a everything has a soul, you know. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of like the extent of my knowledge. Like I know ghostly figures seem like a much bigger motif than like, you know, a demon, say, in like American movies. But I don't really know how it works, personally. Well, hoes, get in touch. Please. I love that idea of Kami, though. Me too. Like, everything, even, like, inanimate, object, inanimate objects having, like, a spirit or a soul. Or, or I just think that's a really cool idea. It makes, like, life, like, brighter, I feel like. Like, when I try to think about it like that, like, um, you know, like your your keyboard is dirty and instead of just being like i gotta clean my dirty keyboard it's kind of like i gotta make sure you like you know your keys are clean because you know you got like an important job to do and you know you you yeah. probably don't like it that you're all dirty like it just makes life just like a little bit more delightful for me yeah it is pretty cool i like that too so his theory is that these souls are invading um the physical world and Harue acts strange and suggests that ghosts would want to trap humans in their own loneliness rather than kill them. So her idea is that she used to, when she was little, she used to think about dying and she wasn't scared because she thought, okay, that's okay. I'll just be with all my people mm. when I die. But then she's like, what if that's not true and you just are trapped in eternal loneliness. Yeah. <laughs> and that the, these ghosts, like, they're trying to connect with us, I guess. But when mm -hmm. they connect with us, maybe this is what happens. Maybe when they, maybe it's not like an evil thing. Maybe it's just a mismatch that mm. like when the ghost people <laughs> try to connect with human people, it just ends badly because they're just not mm -hmm. the same kind of being. And then the human beings just end up just super sad. I thought though, it kind of wasn't if not like nefarious, but because of the way Yoshisaki says, he's like, you know, they wouldn't want to kill you because you know, they don't want you to take up already precious yeah. space. Um, so I feel like it, it it's like, maybe you make space for them if instead of having like a ghost oh. you have your you know loneliness i see again this is kind of oh. where like my brain just didn't really reach okay wait 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 so what if they come into our world and they make us so lonely you know that we kill ourselves but then they get to be in this world it's that's like, what i like, and then place. if everybody's gone, yeah, like if every, because then they wouldn't be a ghost either. Like the people who turn into the black stains, they're just like echoes, you know, um, mm -hmm. they actually aren't spirits. Um, and so then if they can empty this world of everybody, they just have more surface area to be oh, spirits cool. on, oh, I yeah. think. Okay, that makes sense now. Because and I, I saw I saw the idea of them being in our world as in like there and I could be completely wrong, but it's like, okay, so there's earth and then there's like spirit earth and then anything that's in the spirit earth, you don't see because we're on this plane. But then anything that you do see, it's somebody who had to be pushed onto this plane. Um, but you being there takes up space for them. But if they if they kill you, 
you'll just be another spirit there and then this is just going to happen again. Mm. Mm. So instead, turn mm. you into like an echo of yourself by making you so lonely that you turn into, you know, that that black stain. And That's really um, fucking grim. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is like really spooky and um upsetting i don't know again if it's if it's the thing and i only say this because because i i don't think we see any like ghosts of you know any of the characters that die no i don't think so so all right well well hose tell us if we're wrong (laughs) (laughs) i'm sure there are a lot of theories about this i mean this movie is 20 years old so i'm sure it's all been you know said and done before but okay then we have the scene with Harue she this is kind of cool the way it's shot is kind of cool so we have her in the computer and then we have like shots of like the back of her head Mm -hmm. but the computer her and her like get together and um, Harue wants to like hug that Mm-hmm. being and she says i'm not alone <laughs> oh man it's just like so, so sad yeah i okay i'm i think i'm having a little bit of like a brain blast here okay so then that is the display of what happens when you in this world you know enter into this like soul-sucking like internet thing because you're already alone but it feels like you're not alone but you're just kind of with an echo of yourself still and then you're just nothing um yeah sort of i mean if all you're doing okay so if we take it out of the if we go into like what we're really talking about which is interacting on the internet yeah or you know then I i think that's perfect description because you think that you're connecting with another person but of course you control how you present yourself on the internet so you're never actually really connecting with anybody else you're just really having a relationship with yourself and how Mm. you're presenting yourself online boom (laughs) Yeah, because I, because I mean, this isn't something that I necessarily, I've got a lot of complex feelings about social media, as I'm sure everybody does. But like, I feel like in the context of this world, it, it was like, we are already, there's already a lot of like loneliness. There's already a lot of people who can't connect. And, you know, like, like, I mean, uh, I know the you know the the group of people at the plant shop they they have friends but then I think Rios uh Riosuke is a, like a good foil to that cuz it's like I mean I went to college and like I have I had friends before I went to college but my first semester at college was really freaking lonely and it was like really tough because uh like you know you're just constantly reminded of the fact that it's like i don't really have like a home here yet but like i'm here and i have to be here like this kind of sucks um and so like you know he's already going through that even without the internet and then i guess the idea was you include the internet and then that is such an easy way to get a fill of that void of being lonely um but actually it's more detrimental than anything because it's going to keep you from going out and finding those people. Yeah. And I mean, I think that's perfect because the way it, the, we haven't even talked about how it's shot or anything like that, but you know, we see shots like through windows, you know, the, the camera is always super far away from the characters and the characters themselves often sit very far from each mm-hmm. other. And You know, I think that uh, Kurosawa is just trying to say what you just said is that, you know, we already are, we already have a problem connecting with each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then when you add this further complication, that's going to make it even worse, Mm -hmm. you know, and even harder for us to connect to each other. And 
can I can I ask you a question? I'm yeah. interested in your idea just of the actual reality of like internet and relationships with people on the internet. Okay. As someone who didn't grow up with it, like me. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. What's the question? <laughs> what what do you what is your like general opinion about like having a relationship with people over the internet? Like do you do you think that this Kurosawa's like take on this was 100% accurate or I mean, obviously, like, I'm not trying to dunk on Kurosawa. Like, there's no way. Like, this was pretty, I think, intuitive for a system even, I mean, before the internet, like, social media wasn't even, you know, really a thing until, like, way later still. So this is, like, a really, in my mind, like, intuitive look into this. Of course he couldn't predict what it would look like. But um, for you, like, as somebody who still engages with social media, like, do you think there's like the bad side and the good side? Yeah, I really think it's a double-edged sword. I mean, because I remember <laughs> when the internet, you know, came on the scene and I actually worked in a computer lab and I remember the internet before there was like a uh, interface. Do you know what I mean? It was yeah. all te text. Mm -hmm. And in that context, I actually met your dad. Because he was <laughs> I wonder how many kids were born from that. <laughs> <laughs> because he was in another computer lab, you know, several states away. And um, so we didn't have pictures of each other. We were just communicating purely with words. And we felt like, at least I felt, I can't speak for him, but I felt like I knew him like mm -hmm. so much deeper than I would if I met him in a bar mm. because there weren't any visuals, you know, it was just all text, you know, between, so I knew his thoughts and his soul and all this stuff. And, um, we got really close, like really fast. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of relationships, I don't think I, we were alone in that. I think no. a lot of relationships happen like that. And it was also a time when you could look up people. Remember, this is way before Facebook. So you could look up people that you had lost contact with. Like, for example, my mother, you know, got in contact after 35 years with a woman she had known when they were teenagers. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I mean, I, and I think that's pretty cool. Also, not to mention, and this people talk about this all the time, in sort of a joking way, but I don't, I don't think it's a joke. It's like before the internet, if you had something that turned you on sexually, that was different than what you heard about in the media or your friends talked about, you might have felt a little weird and yeah. a little alone, but with the internet, you were able to connect with people who had the same thing that turns them on. And so you realize, oh, I'm not alone. Yeah. I'm not a weirdo. Yeah. You know, I have a thing. Other people have the same thing. And I that's one of the things that I think is amazing um, about that. It doesn't have to even be sexual. Let's say, you know. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I feel like that applies to so many things. Like, yeah. I honestly, last year, um, I was spending a lot of time by myself, um, which I already do a lot, but more than I had done before. And like, I really kind of spent time thinking about like how my brain processes things. And then I just found a lot of community of people who were talking about being like neurodivergent and it like so many of things that they said, like, like for so long, I thought things that my brain did were just like, like, I'm just like everybody else, but like, I'm just not doing it right. Like, just like, I can't get it right. And I'm just like, okay, how do I, how do I get better? You know? And then when you see other people say like, oh no, no, no. Like I process information like that too. Or like, or somebody will say like, you know, has this ever happened to you? And you're like, yeah, all the time. I didn't even know that that was, I didn't have words to describe that that was a thing that happens to me. And then you have other people who maybe have like, it, like issues that, that, you can see the solution to and vice versa. And so you just feel so much more like, okay, like this, cause I mean, it just really is hard to 
we can't all just go into like a machine and get a diagnostic of like, here's everything you like, here's everything you don't like, you know, here's everything that is wrong with you. You know, here's everything that's, you know, unique about you. Like you just kind of have to figure that out. Um, and nobody's going to really, nobody can really help you. Cause like they don't know the inside of your head. So yeah, that was like invaluable to me. And then also just not to mention, like I've made so many friends. I met my boyfriend on the internet. So <laughs> Yeah, I met my boyfriend on the internet too. Yeah. Um, but I also, also I think about um those I think about gay kids who grow up in a really like closed-minded society and if they're fortunate they can connect with other gay kids, you mm -hmm. know, um like in New York or somewhere where it's like they they see that there is a reality that they could eventually, you know, um join. I want to start to cry. We should move on. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> but I, I think that's a miracle because yeah. if you think about before the internet, that little kid in that community, you know, didn't make it. So, <clears throat> I yeah, but I, I do think also that he's right. I think that, you know, it can definitely damage, you know, while people were looking up people like my mom and her friend, you know, other people were having affairs with other people, you know, <laughs> online and ruining the actual relationships they were having, mm -hmm. you know, in the 3D world. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I think it's so easy when you are lonely to, you know, create all this stuff about the other person you're connecting to online that might not be there. Yeah. And like, I definitely have had to relearn how I interact with the internet and information on it and social media. Like, like I, it's a thing, it's like a skill you have to learn so that you don't get too super depressed. Like it, yeah, can totally have that other effect. Um, but I feel like it's such a huge, like part of our, at least, I mean, my life now, um, a lot of people, you know, I don't, I don't want to speak and say it like everybody on the planet, that's not true, but you know, a lot of people that's like, um, now part of society. So I guess you can just think of it like books too. It's like, yeah, books are really amazing. And they can also spread hateful rhetoric and like, you know, yada, yada. It's like, everything is going to have like, there's no good or bad really effect that a thing has. There's just the effects that it has, you know? Yeah. And it, it, it takes our imagination and our creativity to, you know, analyze those things and to make sense of them. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that this, this thesis, you know, is strong and it's fine, but I just don't think it's the whole, the whole story, but I mean, it would be difficult to tell the whole story. You yeah. Know? But I think it's valid though. Like, I think again, like there's parts I'm like, that's really interesting that you, that you could get that, you know, like 20 years ago. Yeah. And, yeah. and not again, there's no way you could have hit on everything, but like really a shot in the dark. Cause there's nothing that's, you know, the internet is like its own crazy thing. Nobody could have known. Um, so it kind of was a shot in the dark and like, you did hit one bullseye. You didn't hit like all the bullseyes, but I think you hit one of them, which is pretty mm -hmm. cool. <laughs> So well, let's Ryosuke. talk about let's talk about what happens in the other storyline. Um, now, one thing about Ryosuke is or Ryo, Ryosuke is he um, he was kind of in love with Harue, and he was trying he was trying to <laughs> counteract her idea that. You know, you're lonely in this world and then you go into the next world and you just stay lonely forever and ever and ever. And he's like, well, wait a second, but we're here now. Like, yeah. We're together now. And um, and he's like, what about your family? And she goes, yes, I have family, but they're irrelevant. I mean, and he's just like, well, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> yeah. And so he's trying to present, you know, his view of the world. Um, which is very different than her view of the world, but he sort of has this optimistic, you know, viewpoint. And that sort of matches with Michi, although um, I really think Ryosuke was really connected to Harue. Yeah. So Tokyo starts to become, 
you know, more and more sparse. People are disappearing. And there's a little bit of this early on, like we just see like a bus and like just Michi, Michi, Michi is on the bus, yeah. you know, and you just sort of have to imagine what reality would be like, you know, normally. I mean, you've seen movies yeah. and stuff, you know, TV, uh, pictures of, you know, people in the subway. And you saw that picture of me carrying you as a baby. Mm -hmm. And I have this look of like, you know, <laughs> protection, determination, determination. Yeah. <laughs> no one is going to touch my baby. Because yeah. I mean, it's, you're just like smushed in with people just constantly. Yeah. Um, so you just have to imagine the bus like that. So there's just like one person on the bus, you know, Yeah. very effective, you know, storytelling there. Do we skip the part where the woman jumped off the water tower? Oh, I think we did. Um, that's something Michi sees, right? Yeah, that, okay. Well, I just, I'm going to talk about that in the trivia, but um, it's just sort of a random event. It seems so sort of random. There's just yeah. this, sh Michi is in the foreground and in the, in the background is this woman on a water tower and you're kind of like, what's up with that? And then she just like freaking jumps off yeah. of it. Um, and, you know, we know that suicide is like rampant in Japan. And around this time, it was also because there was huge economic crisis, mm. you know, right around this time, too. So there was a lot of um, a lot of suicide at that time, too. Well, so Ryosuke and Michi are trying to get out of town and... They meet, Let's, like, on the side of the road? Yeah. He fixes her car and... Oh, oh yeah. So Ryosuke... Okay, the car's out of gas, so he goes to get gas. And then the gas cap falls off of the gas can. And it rolls, wouldn't you know, into a forbidden room. And so he goes in there. He encounters a ghost. And the ghost says, I'm real. Death was eternal loneliness. So he tries to, you know, resist. Yeah. But, you know, he succumbs to this thing too. And uh, they drive through a, a burning Tokyo. Um, there's all this apocalyptic shit going down. Like um, there's this U.S. Army cargo plane that crashes from the sky. It's like on fire. And then they find this motorboat and then they're brought aboard the ship. Um departing from Tokyo, they're going to go to Latin America. Oh, and, and well, they, they also found Hadoue in the factory and she kills herself. Oh yeah. I jumped over that part. She shoots herself. Yeah. That's pretty, which I'm like, where'd she find that gun? <laughs> I know getting a gun's hard in Japan. <laughs> well, somebody had shot himself. The guy with the oh. bag over his head had shot himself. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. In the same way, like under the yeah, the jaw. Under the jaw under the jaw. Yeah. And she does it in the same way. All right. So that's a little bit out of order. But anyway, Ryosuke and Michi are below. Uh, Ryosuke disintegrates as Michi declares that she has found happiness being alone with her last friend in the world. Yeah. And that, that kind of when the movie ended, I was kind of like, okay like i don't know i again i i really i didn't dislike this movie and there's a lot of it that i think is really good but i think maybe a lot could have also gone on the cutting room floor um and i i just could not i really couldn't suspend my disbelief that he would go into that room because like he like they <sighs> Ryosuke and Michi were just saying like, well, I got to be careful. And she's like, do you want me to go in with you? And he's like, no, it's fine. Why wouldn't you just pick up the gas can and leave? Or if you're going to go in there, go get Michi. Like, was there some supernatural drugs? I'm like, you, that makes him the biggest fool. Like, I was like, this doesn't make any sense. Why are you going in there? <laughs> the only thing is, you know, he's constantly denying the existence of these ghosts. And even mm. he, he even says he denies the existence of death. And he <laughs> even suggests to Harui that maybe in a couple of years, there'll be a pill that will allow us to oh, live yeah. forever. Oh, it's okay. So he's you're right. got this like, worldview that you know ah, uh, what could go wrong <laughs> it just seemed like they they just talked about like be careful 
get me if anything happens. And then he's like, oh, something's happening. I don't think I'm going to get Michi. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, I just have one piece of trivia from this movie. Um, and then we can talk about how we want to rate it or whatever. Oh, I, thought, I, I made that face because I was thinking about Pulse 2006. Um, well, we can we can jump into that too. No, tell tell me the tell me the trivia. So this is, uh, I thought this was great. The shot of the woman leaping off the side of a building. It's not the off the side of a building. It's off a water tower. Is a relatively simple combination of careful editing, computer graphics, and stunt work. Mm. As director Ki, uh, Kiyoshi Kurosawa explains it, a stunt woman was filmed bungee jumping off the rooftop. Followed by a dummy dressed in the same clothes. The two shots were edited together and the bungee cord digitally erased. That's really cool. Yeah, because it does straight up look like a woman just like, you know, falls. um, It looks great. It does look great. But it it, it was pretty great how they did that. Yeah. Um, Okay, well, how would we rate it? I mean, I was thinking rolls of red duct tape. Okay. I'm going to give it three and a half. Me too. Aw, twins. <laughs> Maybe 3.75. I mean, I think it's really great. I like this director a lot. I've seen a lot of his movies. I've seen Cure, Before We Vanish, Creepy, Doppelganger. I think he's great. But um, this is <sighs> tough if you think too hard about you know, the yeah. details and how everything works for me anyway. Same. It was a, a bit over long for me. Like really by the end, I was like, I don't know if I can like it. I had to like push myself. I feel like I got to take off a full star for that. Um, if mm-hmm. I, if at any point in the movie, I'm like, I want this to be over. Like <laughs> it's not the best movie. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think that like when it's good, it's pretty great, but honestly, there wasn't enough of the really good stuff for me to be like, I enjoyed this movie. And I genuinely was confused as to why so many of my friends were like, Mac, you got to watch this movie. Mac, you especially are going to love this movie because I did not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't love it either. I th- I think there are some really cool shots I and I really like um, a lot of what he's doing in terms of showing tokyo to be so like mm. you know there actually there is that show that i watched that um game show alice in borderland yeah and they did the same thing where they had yeah. like that um they had that kind of circus area and then then the next shot was like it was totally cleared out and it's spooky as fuck yeah when you see a when you see a, a city like that where there are no people it's very scary and weird mm-hmm. um so i thought that was very effective but yeah, I mean, I um, now do we want to go through the other questions now, or do we want to do that later? Like, what have we learned? Would we watch it again? Who wins the You Fool Award? Let's do it now because, like, what what does the um, like the American one made me so mad? I don't even want to like qualify yeah, it with I know, it with me too. you know right. So okay. I this is the only movie that respects that is respectable to get this. Okay, so what have we learned from Cairo? Do not go into a room with red tape. Um, the internet can hurt you, and ghosts have a set measurement. <laughs> I know. I know. They're, they have bodily dimensions <laughs> yeah they have a corporeal form also people on the internet sometimes are very weird if somebody says do you want to see a ghost click no <laughs> <laughs> i know i was gonna i for, i didn't have it together but i was gonna put that at the beginning and say hey mac i got a question for you <gasps> Do you want to see a ghost? No. <laughs> but I, I, I didn't have it together, so that didn't happen. Would we watch it again? What are you talking again? about? We just did it. Um, <laughs> I, I will, but for the reason of 
I didn't get it. So I, I wanted to see if I can get it. It's not, I would watch it again as in like, I got to see that again. Right. Um, it's more like yeah. when you read a sentence over and over and you're like, what did that say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll watch it again for sure. Um, I would like to see some more of Kurosawa's catalog first. Um, mm-hmm. But I I think, yeah, I'll, I will watch it again. Um, who wins the You Fool Award? I think we already covered it, right? Ryosuke. Ryosuke. Why'd you go in there, the bud? The fuck, man? The fuck, man? <laughs> like, we're... I could have sworn we were about, like, felt like three hours into this already, and you're, you're still making these kind of mistakes. Rookie. Rookie mistake. This might be one of my least favorite movies we've ever watched. Oh my god. Okay. Like, I almost feel like we should just talk about everything wrong with it. Okay, that's fine with me. So this movie came out in 2006. Now, full disclosure, I watched this, I guess probably illegally, on YouTube. It was so bad. Like, it was the copy that was uploaded was so degraded that I mm-hmm. was basically listening to the movie. So <laughs> if there were cool shots or whatever, I miss them. I saw the handsy one. That was know. cool. That was pretty great. Um, For like a video game. <laughs> and that, and her little friend, Isabella or whatever, so pretty. But, you know, other than that. Mm-hmm. And also, is Ian Somerhalder like human? Because no, he's like super, I was just about to say, that's a bot. <laughs> he's like supernaturally good looking. It, it's so much so that I don't find him good looking. Like, I don't like yeah, looking at him. It's, it's like, like, stop. Like, do you know what IMVU is, mom? No, I don't. It's like a second life kind of thing. And like all of the characters look like Ian Somerhalder. Um, Like they just look like, yeah, I guess this is the proportion and the things that we like. But like, I don't like looking at it. (laughs) No offense (laughs) to Ian, but like you do look like you were made in a lab. Yeah, he does. Like, I mean, I think Kristen Bell also is pretty damn good looking, but um, she still looks human. He's on another level. Like, like I was even thinking about the little like, yes. like blushy stuff yes, on his me too. cheek. Like, oh my god! And his like, his, like piercing fucking... blue eyes. Oh I'm like, yeah! What the Shut fuck up is with wrong with eyes. you? God damn it! <laughs> fuck you! <laughs> fuck you, Ian Somerhalder. <laughs> so it was directed by Jim Sonzero. It says on the credits, screenplay by Wes Craven and Ray. Right. Now, Wes Craven was involved, but Craven was like, I'm out. Like, you guys aren't like doing what I want. And, you know, my vision is not going to be realized. And so, but they kept his name, but he said in Fangoria magazine, I didn't have anything to do with that movie. So I would say that too, if my name was associated with this. Cashing in on his good name. So, uh, stars Christian Bell, Ian Somerhalder, Rick Gonzalez, who I don't think I've ever seen before. Do you know that actor? No. Um, Sam Levine from Freaks and Geeks. <laughs> the idea Cap- of, I said this, I texted mom this. I was like, the idea that, that Sam Levine has Kristen Bell's phone number. Now that I cannot believe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kel O'Neill, Ron Rifkin, and Christina Million. She and Octavia is, Spencer had a, had a little cameo. Yeah. Oh, but Octavia, did you really need not, the money that bad? Mm, that, that, I was here's like, what, Octavia. Oh. Here's what we need you to do, Octavia. We need you to be the, like, a super stereotypical. I swear to God. Lower middle class, urban, black. She was a caricature. <sighs> she was a caricature. She was not a character. It's 86 minutes, but holy God, you feel every minute. (laughs) And again, this movie, I was like, I kept being like, is it, is it, oh my God. Like at one point I felt like my, the, the progress, like the bar had gone back and I was like, I could have sworn I only had 20 minutes left. Like, why does it say I have 38? Oh my God. (laughs) Like it's bad. It's It's a bad bad movie. It's bad. You guys. 
It's not even, there's no part that's like, okay, well, I mean, that was, no, it's just like the whole time you're like, this sucks. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about this group of friends. So we've got Josh, Maddie, Ziegler. Uh, I don't know what Sam Levine's character's name is, um, but they're all together in this bar, except for Josh. Josh is missing. I cannot um, believe these guys are friends. There's no way. Yeah, there's no way. There's no chemistry. Um, great, great. We got, we got like a two, two transphobic jokes, like one right after the other in the bar scene. Just, it, it's really of the time. Yes. This whole movie. Also, and the whole movie's blue. Oh, yes, I know. I noticed that too. Um, I did see that despite the fact that most of the picture was very, very bad. Um, but it's blue as fuck, like Alagor Verbinski, I guess. But um, it's awful. I mean, everything's blue. Like every everything. scene is blue. <laughs> yeah, it's so ugly. It's so ugly. Okay, so. Josh is missing because he's had the life force sucked out of him at, in the library. And so Kristen Bell goes to look for him. And now whatever happened to the cat? Oh, my God. This was so unnecessary. I like there's this horrible animatronic cat that's like, I guess the idea was, you know, he hasn't been taking care of it. But the cat's melting. Like, I don't know what happened. Um, but the cat looks like slime was poured on it and it's like like dying but it it, it looks really stupid yeah, <laughs> and of I course was... Kristen Bell like I love how she's not like I'm gonna go help this cat she's just like dude what the fuck is up with you? <laughs> <laughs> so then he offs himself with an internet cable um then everybody starts receiving messages from Josh from beyond the grave they are all the same and they say, help me. That's it. Just help me from Josh. Uh, all right. Now, Josh's computer has been sold. This is where Octavia Spencer comes in um, to the bot himself. Um, Mr. Then, Mr. Uh, Summerhalder. Of course, Kristen and Ian are going to, you know, become a couple. Uh, Josh ain't even cold yet. I know, right? <laughs> So I guess the idea here is that there's a virus. Okay, explain to me what's going on with this. Okay. Oh, yeah. So Maddie also receives a package from Josh that he mailed to her two days before he died. What? <laughs> and and he package, didn't say anything when she came to his house. Okay. The package, I know, the package is like uh, three rolls of red duct tape. And yeah. it just says... These keep them out. I don't know why. <laughs> we never find out why. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. You're a gem and a treasure. So <laughs> this movie is just so stupid. I mean, like the we're we're suffering so much because imagine if if like like the dumbest like piece of shit gave you like a screenplay that he wrote and was like can you can you like break this down for me and it's like then you had to just sit there and be like so then this happens i don't like that's just really how it feels it's just like the dumbest piece of shit wrote this like they did not they didn't even see pulse and put it on a napkin later um somebody else told them what happened in pulse and they were then they wrote that on a napkin and then they gave it to the weinsteins and then um this happened um and the world would have been better off had it not been made. Oh, yeah. It's really bad. Like, I had heard that it was bad, but I Nothing was like, could have prepared well, us. I'll give it a chance. Yeah. Um, oh, man. Also, okay. wh who, who is it? Um, the blonde lady um, from Garfunkel and Oates. Ricky Lindholm. She she has a cameo. Maybe it was too, like, staticky for, for you to see. But yeah, she was in I totally missed her. She she was the lady in the laundry room. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, I think Brad Dorif is in this movie. Um, let me just look that up. But I think that is correct. Um, and he's the voice of Chucky. Oh. So um, he was the one who was like kind of crazy, like mm. at one point, like explaining stuff. Yeah. 
Did you know that there are two straight to DVD sequels? Oh my god. Pulse I, two. I caught depression from that. <laughs> Pulse 2 Afterlife and Pulse 3. They were both uh, released in the same year. <laughs> so that's a great use of money. <laughs> no. Brad, yeah, Brad Dorif is the thin bookish guy, and R Ricky Lindholm plays Janelle. Oh, Zach Grenier is also Professor Cardiff. Mm. He's somebody, right? I know that name. Maybe it's just a character actor name. Okay, so uh, what the fuck was Josh up to? Like, there's something about a virus or something, but he he's a hacker. Um, yeah. He got a virus. They fucked up. Now it's everywhere, and they can't stop it unless it. It and so many people tell us the plot. Like at one point, um, Kristen Bell and Ian like go out into the street, and there's these two old people who just like give them the lowdown. Like they're just like <laughs> explain everything that's going on, and then they're like, "We gotta go." Um, and <laughs> they. I really tried to follow, but then I, I felt my brain slowly turn to mush. And so then, like, I couldn't follow. Um, but the, he fucked up with a virus, and now there's Dementors everywhere. <laughs> that, okay, it's it's funny you say Dementor, because that's what I thought of in, like, the first movie. Mm. Like, that they were kind of, like, Dementors. Mm -hmm. But, okay, yeah. So, okay, so that's going on. Um, and then there's something about... Josh has a counter program, and that's on a memory stick that's inside the PC case. I don't know. But they, but even they try to do it, but it doesn't work. Um, and also, Ian Summerholder and Kristen Bell kiss, um, and they hold hands. Uh -huh. Like everybody dies. Okay, I will say there was one cool shot, and to me, that was the shot of I think Ziegler. When Sam Levine goes to check up on him and he dies, he like kind of molds into the wall and like his face looks so scary. Like that is the only good part. Like just look up that scene and that's it. That's all you need to watch. Um, Kristen Bell like almost gets eaten by it, but then Ian Summerholder saves her. Like it's just so bad. There, um, there was one thing that reminded me of the invitation because in the first movie, um, people put the red tape like around the door or around the mm -hmm. window or whatever. In this movie, people like seal up whole windows with like this red tape. And there's a shot when you look at like this apartment complex and there are all these red windows. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought that was kind of a cool shot. Um, anyway, we don't need to talk about this anymore. But how no. about that last um, voiceover? Oh, my God. <laughs> Really is like the same tone as like record scratch. So, hey, I bet you're wondering how I got myself into this situation. Well, there are creepy virus men all over the planet and me and my boyfriend need to go. Like, that's the tone it has. Life was not what we knew. It was a new life now. Now we cannot be near the radio towers or like, just shut yeah, up. The cities belong to them. Um, Who? <laughs> Uh, whatever it's bad don't watch it please don't watch it i mean it's just bad <laughs> there's nothing to recommend it at one all one of the worst movies i've ever seen in my life um when maddie sits in the bus just before her professor tries to put himself in its path okay that actor who is that actor the guy who played the professor is I don't that what is that um is that Grenier? yes it is okay so that guy was on Oh, he's on The Good Wife and The Good Fight. I was confusing him with somebody else. But um, I do like The Good Wife and The Good Fight. Okay. <laughs> watch those. <laughs> you know what? If you need something to watch, like, <laughs> sign up for like a week-long trial for CBS and watch The Good Fight. If you haven't seen The Good Wife, you're fine. Um, if you want to go back and watch The Good Wife, it's a perfectly great series. But The Good Fight, oh, man. That is good television, so watch that. Anyways. So the professor, this... Oh, also, one thing... Okay, when we get to the what have you learned part, I have something to say. Okay. 
Um, all right. When Maddie sits in the bus just before her professor tries to put himself in its path, behind her is a bearded student, an extra. Repeated views of the films. I'm not going to watch this film again. We'll find him a total of three times in three different scenes. First in the front schoolyard, then in the bus, and one more time in the computer lab. This is an intentional effect. Sure it is. To add to the paranoia of the ghosts following you around wherever you go. Hey, guys, we couldn't get enough money for extras. (laughs) Write it down as intentional. (laughs) Uh, It was originally scheduled to be released March 3rd, 2006. Then it was pushed back to July 14th. And it finally hit theaters on August 11th, 2006. Should we, should we, no, don't release it. Ah, fuck it. (laughs) Now, I think the budget and what it took in was about the same, but then when it was released on DVD, it made like that much more again. That's upsetting. Like 25 million or something. How many people have this in their homes? Break it. Okay. (laughs) Snap it in half. (laughs) If you or a loved one. (laughs) Know somebody with Pulse 2006. Report them to me right now so I can drive to their house and break it personally. It's just so dumb. It's like, it's so disappointing. This is one of those where, you know, the original had so much nuance and like, you know, interesting shit going on. And then this is just like, blam, blam, blam. Here's the dumbest version of those ideas that we could come up with. Money, please. <laughs> Money, please. <laughs> okay, so how do we rate it? Do we want to rate it in red duct tape rolls again? Yeah, I burned the red duct tape <laughs> pile. <laughs> That's how many it deserves. <laughs> oh, man, not even a half? I mean, on Letterboxd, I had to give it a half. But if it was a real pile of red duct tape, burn it <laughs> down wow. to the ground. I would give it a half. Because, I mean, I can't stop you if you want to watch it. And there are a couple of cool shots. But, oh my god, you could spend your time so much better. Go back and listen to other, you know, episodes of this show. Yeah. I mean, god, go for a walk. Like, just take that 86 minutes or whatever. And just do something nice for yourself. Get a pedicure. Don't watch this movie. It's bad. I can and I will stop you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what have we learned? We've learned um they we learned that whoever did that makeup for Kristen Bell all need needs to not be in this industry anymore. Um and who also whoever did the color of this movie should not be in this industry anymore. That's what that's what I learned. <laughs> One thing we didn't talk about is Kristen Bell goes to see a, th- a therapist. Um, oh yeah, because of you know her boyfriend killing himself in, in front of her, and he yells at her the whole yes. time. He yells at so her. One thing I learned is that. <laughs> If you have a therapist who does nothing but yell at you, find another therapist. He ain't working. And also, I learned that um, Kristen Bell is doesn't know how to express her feelings. She was not very. I mean, like, I, I don't know how you could make this role good, to be fair to her. But, like, also, she didn't. Kristen Bell might as well be, like, a sim. Like, this was a sim yeah, that looks like t- Kristen Bell, totally. but there's nothing. Yeah. Like, she makes good faces, but... Yeah. She's pretty. Mm. I like Kristen Bell. Anyways, uh, what else? Is there anything else that we've learned? I mean, I guess the internet is vulnerable to viruses. Bad. Internet bad. And it's also Red duct magical. tape good. Yes. <laughs> I like that. Internet bad, duct tape good. <laughs> Live in the country with Ian Summerholder. Would we watch it again? Mm-hmm. No way. No way. Not if no. you paid me. It'd have to be a lot of money. <laughs> I won't say I don't have a limit, but it would be <laughs> a large sum. 
Who wins the You Fool Award? Me, for watching it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, y'all, it's bad. I don't know if we've mentioned our feelings on this subject. Because I think the Martyrs remake, the Martyrs remake has as much sense, but, and yet it it ignited some like anger in me. So at least I had an emotion while watching it of just like, oh, what the fuck? Okay. But then this one was just like, please, please end it. Please end my torture. (laughs) Yeah. It was like that too. Like almost immediately when I like started it and like, okay, how long is this movie? Yeah. (laughs) Like like, what have I signed up for? Oh God. (laughs) Um, but I'm glad, you know, it wasn't a very good copy that was on YouTube, but I'm glad I didn't pay $4 to watch it. Me too. I torrented Prime. it. Oh, well, good for you. Mm-hmm. Should we move on, Mac? Let's move on. on to our next segment what has max seen this is the horror anime version and because we've already done tech horror Mm -hmm. we might have to think about something else for this segment for season three but this list is from thrillist ranker and (laughs) nerdmuch.com that's a cute name isn't it nerd much okay this is long but i guess you can tell me like if you've seen them, if you think they're good, if you think I should watch them, whatever. Okay. Angels of Death. Not. No. Another. Um, It's like Final Destination, the anime. Do you like it? Mm-hmm. Black it's good. Bu- look, up, look up the death scenes on YouTube. <laughs> okay. Black Butler. Um, I would say it's less horror, more... Pretty Boys, mm. if that's your thing. Blood, it is my thing. Blood <laughs> Plus. Oh, I, I, if I've seen it, I don't remember it. Boogie Pop Phantom. Never seen it. Corpse Party, colon, <laughs> Tortured Souls. Pretty great game. I have never watched the anime, but I've seen a game play, the, the playthrough of the game is pretty good. Dead Man Wonderland. Um, it's kind of like Hot Topic, the anime. <laughs> Death Note. I mean, <laughs> amazing, but please do not watch the dub. Please watch it subbed. I'm usually not like this, but I just think the dub is atrocious. Devil Man Crybaby. Um, I've not through it yet, but it's pretty good. I like it. Elfin Lied. That's a great, that's a great anime. I watched I, that. Yeah. I, I watched, I watched three eps. You did? Yeah. With me? No. Oh, by yourself. Did you like it? Yeah. It's really bloody. <laughs> no, that's fine. Fountains. Um, oh yeah. Fountains of blood. The flowers of evil. No, I haven't seen that. From the new world. Haven't seen that. Future diary. Haven't seen. Gantz. Haven't seen it, but I want to. Ghost Hunt. Haven't seen that. Ghost Stories. I haven't seen that. Hell Girl. Yes, pretty good. Helsing. Um, I read the manga and it's crazy. So I would recommend it. Japan Sinks 2020. No, I haven't seen that. Mirai Nikki. Oh, um, um, hold on. Oh, I haven't seen it, but a lot of people like it, but it seems kind of cheesy to me. Mononoke. I haven't seen it. Monster. I haven't seen it, but I want to. Mushishi. I haven't seen that. Paranoia Agent. I haven't seen that. Parasite colon the Maxim. Yes. Good. It's on Netflix. Watch it. Perfect Blue. Um, Yes. Great movie. 
10 out of 10. The Promised Neverland. Never seen that. Sankaria. Never seen that. School Days. Um, yes, I've talked about it on this podcast before. Oh, mm -hmm. I don't remember. It was, it was about a head in a bag. Oh, cool. School Live. I haven't seen that. Serial Experiments Lane. I saw that, but it was so long ago, I don't remember it. Shiki. What was that? Shiki. I haven't seen that. Toko. I haven't seen that. Tokyo Ghoul. I haven't seen that, but I've heard great things. Vampire Night. Um, that's like Twilight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Vampire Princess Miyu. I haven't seen that. When They Cry, colon, Higurashi. Yes, I love it. The World Yami Zukan. I haven't seen that. Yami Shibai, colon, Japanese Ghost Stories. I haven't seen it. So if you had to recommend one of those. Perfect Blue. Perfect Blue. Okay. Perfect Blue. Watch Perfect Blue. It is like... That's that's like an objectively good movie anyone would like. I mean, if you like horror. If you don't like horror, you won't like it. But it's like a work of art. Okay, I will watch it. Tell me when you watch it. I am in the 120s of movies I've seen this year. Ooh, let's see where I am. I think I'm about 126, 127, somewhere in there. Dang. I'm 61, so you, you've done two, oh, two with me. I feel terrible, too, because there are, like, series of shows, like, entire series of shows I've also watched, but... And I still think Possessor is one of the best movies I've seen this whole year. It's a great movie. Super I was great. thinking about it a lot when we were watching, um... What was it? What was the name of it? Uh, Videodrome. Videodrome. Holy shit, Videodrome. Okay, should we say the art outro? It's been sure. almost two hours. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Paul says destroyed me. Mm hmm It took the life out of you. Oh, you did it. <laughs> Join us next time when we look at the Japanese classic Dark Water from 2001 and the 2006 American remake. Before we go, Wohos, we want to say thank you so much for supporting us. It means the world of horror to us truly. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter and now on YouTube. We love you. Don't go into the basement.